The Michael addition reaction is a conjugate addition reaction, and specifically, it's a 1-4 conjugate addition reaction. It's been a really long time since we've talked about conjugated bonds or 1-4 addition, so I want to begin by just giving you a little bit of a refresher. Probably the last time that you really thought about this was when you were learning about dienes, which are conjugated double bonds, double bonds that are separated by only one single bond. And with dienes, you learned about different addition reactions, such as adding HBr to a diene. You learned that there were two different ways that HBr could be added to the diene. One option was that the hydrogen and the bromine added themselves to the double bond between carbons 1 and 2, which would give you a product that looked like this. The other option is that the hydrogen and the bromine added themselves to carbons 1 and 4 of the diene. In order to do this, one of the double bonds would have to reposition itself in between carbons 2 and 3, so that would give you a product that looked like this. <clears throat> Again, the hydrogen and the bromine adding themselves to 1 and 4, and one of the double bonds relocating itself into the middle. This was the 1-4 addition reaction right here. In this particular situation, the conjugated system is a carbon-carbon double bond and a carbon-oxygen double bond, separated by just one single bond. We are adding a nucleophile and a hydrogen from H3O+, and we are adding them to the first and the fourth atom of the conjugated system. This one's a little bit trickier to understand because it's not a, a fully carbon system, but we can still use the same numbering scheme. If we call this one, two, three, and four, these are the four atoms of the conjugated system. You can see that we're putting the nucleophile onto what we're calling carbon number one, and we're putting the hydrogen onto oxygen, which is what we're calling number four. This is gonna produce an enol, and as you know, the enol is going to tautomerize itself to make a ketone. Uh, in this, I'm using R, the symbol R to indicate whatever might be attached to carbon number one and also carbon number three. These could be hydrogens or they could be alkyl groups. And one of the things about this 1-4 addition reaction, this Michael addition reaction, is that only specific nucleophiles are appropriate for this reaction. The nucleophiles have to be pretty weak. If we try to use a strong nucleophile like a alkoxide or like a hydride ion or something, those nucleophiles, like we've seen many times, they're just going to go right after the carbonyl carbon and do that sort of reaction right there, which is what we're trying to avoid. So in these reactions, we're using nucleophiles that are, they do have negative formal charges on them, even though I've left a couple out, um, but they are relatively weak nucleophiles. So they're not being drawn directly to the carbonyl carbon, they're being drawn instead to carbon number one. These are the most common nucleophiles that we see in the Michael addition reaction. Sometimes they're referred to as Michael donors. And I want to add over here this um, lithium dialkyl cuprate, the actual nucleophile in uh, for this reagent is going to be the R- ion. The mechanism for this reaction is pretty straightforward. The only really tricky part about this reaction, just in terms of the mechanism, is that the nucleophiles are typically, as you can see, really big molecules. So it is pretty easy to kind of make a mistake when you're drawing the products of this reaction. There's a lot of carbons to keep track of. And I'm gonna be using just the very first nucleophile that's on our list here with this conjugated system. It is handy just to kind of uh, identify, maybe not necessarily number, but just identify the four atoms of the conjugated system so you know what you're working with. You want the nucleophile to attack the carbon of the, of the conjugated system. So whether you call that number one or number four is totally up to you. And then move the carbon-carbon double bond and also move the carbon-oxygen double bond. So the intermediate that you're going to get from this, um, we've got now a carbon-oxygen single bond with a negative charge on the oxygen. oxygen. The carbon-carbon double bond has been repositioned, and we have formed a bond right here to our nucleophile. And this is where you want to be careful when you're drawing your nucleophile to make sure that you don't add any extra carbons or lose any carbons. We're ready for step two of the reaction. This is where we protonate the oxygen and this is going to produce the enol. So as you can see, this, like I said, this mechanism is actually pretty simple. And then in the last step, we're just gonna have a tautomerization where the enol rearranges itself to a ketone. And 
not like that. <laughs> so we're going to move the carbon-carbon double bond to reform that carbon-oxygen double bond. And there's the product of this Michael addition reaction.